you can switch within the same system. So from instead of looking at for the day view, I just switch to a 24 hour view quickly. So we can look at um, the data in more detail. So right around uh, 10 30 p.m. yesterday it started it somehow I got fixed and uh, there'll probably be an issue at this response created to explain what fix was um, we can also look at the lighting alerts so similarly you can go into lighting views and it uh, again the system understands how how industrial IOT works so you can see how there is the concept of command and a status because if you're working with these distributed systems you can send a command and you, you're not really guaranteed that the status actually took something broken on the equipment could cause the status not to change. So there's two charts that we look at together. And, and if they, they're not matching up, that's one type of error that can happen. Uh, if you switch to the seven day view, you can also look at daily run times. Um, so we've got three lighting circuits being monitored, the interior lights, the exterior lights, and the signs. And the run times of each of them look about reasonable. Interior lights should not really run much more than about half a day. Exterior lights about the same. And then signs really only turn on for a smaller portion of the uh, time. And this allows us to manage lighting energy at the same time. The last, last interesting chart over here would be the air quality chart. Um, so you can see the uh, humidity and CO2 being measured and monitored. They seem within reasonable values. CO2 at about 800 is a little bit higher than people tend to like, but um, it's within reason. And humidity is a little low, but, but that's just uh, probably the weather down there in Texas. So that was kind of the end of my demo of the app itself. Trying to stay really fast. We can dig into any questions. Yeah. yeah does anyone have any questions? So. I have a few questions uh, for Paulov. Um, Paulov, can you speak about how the advanced intelligence or artificial intelligence neural network within Acid Care Cloud addresses accurate, real time, always on HVAC optimization, multi unit specifically? Paula, if you're muted. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I was muted. So um, the, the way the process starts off is we have a, a site being onboarded. Once the site has been onboarded, the meaning all the that has to be installed has been installed. The data that we need to provide con contextual information about what's going on at the site collected. There's a but uh, the users send the site over to the software by clicking a button and say it's ready for optimization. At that time, the software automatically looks at all the RTUs that are available and starts building a model for the performance. So the first thing it tries to learn is how does each RTU affect every zone in the building? And in order to do that, what it does is it waits for an occupied period because of the building schedules, we know when people are not there. We also like use a few other context and pieces of information, like if someone changes a set point or an occupancy sensor changes, uh, we disable our step testing. What it tries to do is turn every RTU off for 30 minutes, turn only one of them on for 30 minutes, and then turn everything off for 30 minutes and repeat this process until it has a model where it can eliminate disturbances and only observe how one one unit affects the entire building. Once it has that information, that's all it needs in order to start optimizing. The only inputs it needs beyond that are what was the space temperature in the previous five minute period. And it can, at that point, output what the settings would be for the next five it really optimizes users to predictive control to predict the best behavior over the next 30 minutes, but then every five minutes it recalculates the optimal value to say how many states of each RTU need to be on in order to meet the comfort goals and also minimize how many of them turn on or off. And like over here we can see like the green line, which is the optimized set point, 
is going up above the dashed space temperature line. And what that ends up causing over here, for example, in this particular piece, is it forces the unit off. So we don't even need to control the unit directly. Just by changing the set point on the thermostat, we decide how long the unit will run in that any five period. And with these each five minute steps, what it ends up doing is, for example, in this side, down the corridor, RT1 basically runs all the time because it's a very efficient unit and it uses the uh, cooling capacity from RT1 to provide cooling for the zones for RT2 and 3, thereby ensuring that only the most efficient unit runs and also minimizing how many units can come to turn on at any given time. So, uh, follow up, how do you determine that that's the most efficient unit? We uh, we we do it a couple of different ways. The first first thing we do is during the data collection, we have a uh, when we're onboarding units, we get information about the nameplate performance. So we we get an idea of the rated performance of the unit. Um, beyond that, the system is automatically looking at how much how much capacity the the unit has, meaning uh, by running at any given moment, how much cooling is it providing, and uh, there's a reasonably good correlation between the capacity being provided and the power being used, and uh, with efficiency becoming approximately the same, and that allows us to minimize much power is used. So it, it, it's it's a combination of the nameplate information providing us efficiency and capacity, and then watching the performance of the unit to see uh, if it's close to the real world, and that's what the model learns. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah, it's uh, uh, Jeffy Ramoto, Apollo. I'm wondering if you would have a um, summary of Bank of America location for somewhere in the northern US. And what I'm trying to do here is replicate Canadian climates to get a representation saying that Bank of America in Wisconsin or Northeast US saved 8% or 10% or 12%, whatever that might be. Paul, if you mute it again. That's really, sorry guys. Um, so all of Bank of America locations are really, uh, every every state is available. So I can kind of search for any state. Like if I'm just trying to go to Wisconsin, I can just scroll back really to the end. Um, so here we've got some states in Washington. Um, skipping a few pages back, we come up Wisconsin. Um, I guess I can just search by state. Oh, so I guess we don't have enough locations in Wisconsin, but Washington, uh, Washington, Seattle is about close to the, uh, there's many sites close to the uh, Seattle border. Sorry to interrupt you. What I was looking for, though, is something that gets snow, you know, replicating Calgary or Edmonton or Toronto weather conditions. And, uh, you know, Seattle, Washington is pretty temperate climate like Vancouver. So do you have any other states where there's a heating and air conditioning? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, for example, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, both, all those sites are pretty much have cold, long cold spells. New, up, upstate New York will have a lot of long cold spells and heating combined. So many of these sites, in fact, have uh, uh, a combination. Either they have like heat pumps put into them, or they have gas heat and boilers, and we are tracking all of them. So, uh, so do you have sort of a net savings that you could summarize from from those states? Just ballpark it: eight percent, ten percent, three percent. Um, I don't have it. So in, in typically what we estimate is we are getting about 10% efficiency savings and 20% demand reductions once, some, once someone enables unit coordination. At the bank locations, we are not using unit coordination actively. It's something we are working on implementing with the bank to work within the firewall. Uh, for the bank, the energy savings are coming from using our reports to ensure their set points are being maintained and units are not running too long and lights are not running too long. Um, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head for that though. Okay. Any other questions, folks? 
Yes, I have a question. Um, Paul, of how, when you think about multi-site customers or operations, so individual uh, customers with, with many sites, how does uh, Africa provide that multi-site, multiple asset value for a, a, an operator like, for example, Bank of America or other large clients? Um, how does it provide that uh, multi-site, multi-asset value uh, to us? Or, or why a distributed, physically distributed organizations? So this is a perfect example of how, like the screens we are looking at with the active alarms is kind of a perfect example. Um, these are actively used by the bank throughout the year. And what they do here is, uh, just as we are looking at the score duration and alert counter and the types of alerts, what they end up doing is uh, the bank has certain not acceptable in terms of performance. So one of the first things they do is if it's at early in the year, like between January and starting about February to April, as spring is starting, they'll start focusing on heating and cooling issues. They'll also, uh, it, and, and like, until like all the worst heating and cooling issues are resolved. And they do it using a combination of things. They, if they, they look at the alert counter, and if the alert counter is going up over and over, to them that indicates it's just a equipment problem and that, that indicates a possibility of uh, our equipments that are good candidates for replacement. Um, sometimes they look at durations and durations would indicate to them that the service is not being performed well, for example. And then they'll also look at scores to see which sites have the most severe problems so they can focus on them first. And depending on which project they've started, but they usually have like small projects that start every few months and, and focused on solving a particular set of problems nationwide. And since they have access to the name of the service providers that are doing the work and the sub-regions it's happening in, this helps them hone down on which areas their specialty partners need more help uh, to fix problems. Uh, same with thing where they have uh, it, it, the lighting issues they often run into is on just leaving the override switch on, for example. And what they'll do there is they have a tolerance of if the if the lighting alert lasts more than seven days, it creates an escalation within the bank. If it fixes itself within seven days, then they uh, then they then they don't really act upon it. But if it's been on more than seven days, then they'll go talk to the facility partners or shoot out emails. And they use this system to export these alerts out and manage them within their own work order management system beyond that. Say when hurricane season arrived last year in Florida when there were all these hurricanes happening, um, they, they were focusing very highly on the liquidity problems to identify banks that, uh, which were worst affected. And uh, so it's a very seasonal project oriented uh, process that allows them to use a small team of central managers in the bank's case they call them the ic3 and central managers can kind of dispatch solving problems that are seasonally relevant at that point across the nation okay any other questions folks yeah and as you can see, you know, in, in the case of mCloud, we, we provide this type of service for the, the Michaels chains of stores. And, uh, and we've been uh, actively uh, implementing unit coordination in, in a lot of uh, uh, locations. Uh, the ones you've seen uh, uh, demonstrated, but they're uh, the biggest uh, customer right now that we're uh, in the early stages of onboarding is uh, Starbucks. And uh, uh, we, we've done uh, the first uh, 225 stores in California, and we're now actively putting in unit coordination in uh, seven stores in the San Diego area as we uh, uh, start growing uh, that footprint. The goal is to get uh, most of the California stores done this year. That's about 1,450 of them. Uh, so pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, with that, I'm gonna you know, see if there's any other questions. If, if not, um, Thank you all for participating. Uh, Russ, do you have any other comments you'd like to add? No, we're good. Thanks, Tino and Paulov and team. Thank you very much.
Bye.